I'm here to talk about my idea of how um, it's pretty much like the the end for movies and for like TV shows and stuff like that. It's the end of a uh, of filmmaking. It's the end of cinema as a whole. Like the end, like the end, like the end fall off the cliff end, you know, uh, final battle end, the final epic battle end, you know, the battle to end all battles, you know, the, 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 the ending to end all endings, basically, and what, uh, um, the, you know, like, let me give you a couple examples, and let me give you a couple insights on why I say that, stereotypes, one, this is a big one, stereotypes in film, how can stereotypes, how can directors and writers continue to use, um, keep on making films and not um, make stereotypes too comical and make stereotypes too, um, too um, goofy or too offensive. You see, the, you have to understand that in movies you have to have characters. These characters have to be in certain ways stereotypes. That has to be the villain. That has to be the the good guy. That has to be the 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 mentally disabled person. That has to be the the Christian person. That has to be the science guy, the nerd guy, the computer guy. That has to be the 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 sexy nerd woman. There has to be stereotypes in movies in order for for the story to perpetuate and to grab the attention of the viewer. Without obvious dimensions of stereotypes and characters, the movie does not progress and people do not feel like they're involved in it in a traditional sense. You know, and whether filmmakers and TV show writers want to admit it, they're not helping the situation. They're not helping uh, society that much. They're just perpetuating stereotypes. Even though we blow down... Um, just like in Star Trek with when uh, Kirk, Captain Kirk kissed the, the African American woman, you know, you break down stereotypes and all that stuff, but at the same time, it, it's still all for, uh, it's all for money, it's all for, uh, it's all, it, because you have to understand that filmmaking in, within itself is not a real profession, it's a childish profession. TV show making is, ch is a childish profession, I mean, I mean, look at the magazines and the, t and television. What do they do on their spare time? All they do, all, all celebrities do, is travel, walk around the city, get people taking pictures of them. That's like, that's that's just a childish. You know, the the whole the whole the whole thing about filmmaking and TV shows is all childish, and that, that goes for music too. But you can't you over you you can't. You know, we we've hit the wall. You know, people want traditional stereotypes. They want a story that they can follow. They want a story that they can grasp easily. And take the ride on. But at the same time, they don't want the same old, same old. But what do we do? Well, there is nothing we can do. You can try to make characters vague, like Japan does with their, with their um, movies. You know, back in the in in, in the noughties and the in the double zeros, uh, I saw a lot of sci-fi movies, a lot of horror movies, a lot of romantic drama movies from 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 Asia. That's what I'm trying to say. And their movies are very vague, and 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 Japan animation is very vague too. There's no real um. There's no real un there's, there's there's no real path the character follows. There's no real structure to the plot. It's just up and down and around and everywhere. And the reason why Japan, even Japan, is hurt by by the the um the fate of filmmaking. Even Japan is 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 bound by the fate if Americans are stuck in the rut and, Jap and Japan is reflecting that then you know that movies and TV shows are hurting and they've been hurting for a while you know now like the, the Japan characters are very vague and the storylines the plots are very vague because they don't know because they don't want to you don't want to use a, the basic the, the obvious structure of storytelling you know a man gets up um, he goes and gets a cup of coffee and then a big old huge uh, um, mechanical 
Godzilla-looking monster busts through the the building, his apartment complex, and he flies down, and then, and then, and then all of a sudden he has this uh this cool car that transforms into a transformer, and he gets inside and fights this robot. You know, like, you know, like how 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 are they gonna do? You know, like you know, it's all been done basically. It's all been done, and and even in Japan animation, what I like about Japan animation is that they don't use what I see. They don't use obvious uh. Um, stereotypes. The characters are pretty much even, and 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 even when the characters are kind of goofy and kind of funny, it doesn't seem offensive. It seems to kind of flow right with everything. But in, but in Western movies and cartoons and all that stuff, we have to. The characters have to be so goofy. It's so cut and dry, you know. But other than that, um, people say that movies are not gonna die. But the thing is though is that the whether we like it or not, movies and television is already dead. You can't use stereotypes and not be offensive. You can't you, you can't use an old stereotype stereotype and uh, and not have it be boring. You have to have some sort of stereotypes or no perpetuate a story, and to tell uh, to to have a cast perpetuate a story. You, you you know you can't you know. And uh, we're stuck using the same characters. You know. We're stuck using the same stereotypes and characters in order to perpetuate a plot, and people can say, "Oh, well, the plot can twist and turn, and the and the father could be gay. And he thought he was straight, and and da 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 da." But I mean, come on. I mean, you know, why would you want so much such dr drastic jump points? You make the story so unattractive when you have so many drastic drops in the plots and storytelling. You know, it's just like dubstep. You know, what is the Sign of the times, dubstep is the sign of the times. It's terrible music, and it doesn't have no structure to it. And likewise, it's a reflection of the era that we live in, you know. And uh, but uh, other than that, movies cannot go forward because of stereotypes, and because the plots, you know, how many times, you know, people want something. Like I said, people want something that's record, that's familiar, but at the same time, they don't. How do you? reinvent something that's familiar and not make it too too thrown off there's really no way you can because again you have to use a, the typical image of the old in order to carry that which is new forward if there's a story about like you know um maleficent whatever that was with angelia jolene the only way that they would recreate it's like a prequel to um sleeping beauty that's what maleficent is it's a prequel to Sleeping Beauty. You know, you have the, the evil dark queen, you know, and uh, and um, they tell her side of the story, how she became bad, and how the Sleeping Beauty be, uh, first started to sleep, you know, how why she's sleeping and all that. But people wanted to, like, you know, yeah, let's make something, you know, that's recognizable, but let's make it different. But the only way to do that is to utilize certain points of the plot of the story and or and then and then you reconstruct the 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 uh reconstruct it and push it perpetuate it in different directions you know but you have to use the stereotype of a evil queen with a goofy horn hat and a long black dress and the magical whimsical environment in which she lives in those are the two main obvious stereotypical things and how many times can you regurgitate at chop it up, regurgitate it, and then, you know, reuse it. How many times can you do that? You know, Maleficent is just a, a result of that, you know? Like, they're just lucky that someone came up with an idea like that because it actually is pretty, uh, it's pretty cool and it's pretty different, but it's still not original, you know? It's still not anything drastic. Now, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, um, it's very funny Back in the 50s and 60s, technology was progressing for film. And as in each decade, as as each film appeared within those decades, they utilized those technologies to per, to perpetuate the story and all that. In the 90s, we had a pinnacle with Titanic and we had uh, Jurassic Park and Terminator. Those are the three big ones that were like the pinnacle of the te technological advancement. Now we're still using the same technology to perpetuate the story. Back then in the 20th century, when you utilized the technology, it made the story 
that much more drastically more original. It drove it more to the original side. But now since we're still we're still kind of like dragging on this technology, the three the the three D technology, not three D glasses, but three D computer technology. We're just dragging it on and polishing the graphics and polishing it up. We could polish it up all we want, but that still will not save us from reinventing plots and telling new stories. You could you could you could have a whole cast of CGI characters that look like one hundred percent people like you and me right now, like in the video right now, but Unless you come up with a different way to, to tell a story, it's, it's not going to make a difference, you know. It's not, it's not going to make a difference. Even if you mix it up and, like, have a scene where this realistic CGI guy tries to trip, starts to trip out, and his environment melts, and he melts, and all this, and it looks like, it all looks, looks like surreal. I mean, it'll look cool, but how does that help the story? You know what I'm saying? How does that tell the story? Don't be dubstepping, man. Don't be doing too many drops and that's what people are doing they're doing too many drops trying to get some shock value but they're not telling a value story they're not telling an original story you know and, and 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 like i said how many times can you tell a story where it has a middle a beginning a middle and end every story has to have a beginning middle end every story has to have a conclusion and a climax every story has to have a middle where where the the bad guy meets the good guy and the bad guy steals the woman and, and the bs every movie has to have a beginning where the, the good guy is born, the bad guy is born. You have to have all those three, three basic beginnings of a story for movies, books, and TV shows. Origin story, end story. How many times can you regurgitate that and reinvent that? You can't. You know, when you look back on the stories of Albert Hitchcock, when you look back on the movies of Albert Hitchcock, you look back at the movies of Steven Spielberg, E.T., and you look back at all the stories, there was something there that was special. It wasn't just that the, the technology fused with great plots and storytelling helped the movie become legendary, but it was because people in general were more gullible back then. People nowadays are just too smart for their own good. They don't, they're not going to believe, they're not going to have the same heartfelt feeling that they had for E.T. They're not going to be shocked by a shark like they did for Jaws. They're not going to... um you know, fall in love with dinosaurs and kind of be afraid of them at the same time like they did in Jurassic Park, you know, like, like, there's, you know, um, it, it, it's, it, people are just too smart now, they know, when they look at the movie, they know how it's going to end, let me, look, when a little kid looks at a story, a teenager or prepubescent kid, seven or eight years old or preteen, they look at a story, when they look at Malnificent, how, what do you think the ending's going to be? What is the ending? You know? In this case, I heard that it was different. But still, it was kind of different. But the but the but the the prince survives and 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 uh and Maleficent, the evil woman, survives too, but she goes on and lives by herself and she becomes evil. You know, so like you know, basically basically, you know, let me reiterate that. The story is the same as it is in story books children's story books. You know, children can tell, you know, how a story's going to end. Like, let me tell you, you know, let me tell you how um, 22 Jump Street ends. Both of the two main characters survive. And then they're walking off and they're driving off listening to some dumbass music. And they're joking around while the background music plays and the credits roll. That's how 22 Jump Street ends. I bet you anything. How does, um, how does, um... How's Jurassic Park 4 going to end? It's going to end with one or two survivors and them abandoning the island. You know, I bet you anything is going to be something similar to that. It's going to be very easy. It's, it, you know, it, it, there's no way to retell a story. There's no new way. You know, how many times can you tell a story and reinvent it? You just can't. Everything has been done. Every perception, every angle of a camera, every lighting... Every color has been used, every hue, every tint, every perception, every, every, um, every vision, science fiction, comedy, drama. There is no new way to tell a story. There is no new way to tell a story, you know. Like, it, this is basically the end for filmmaking. I mean, people are not going to stop. They're going to still keep going. But basically, they're just dragging the corpse. It, movies and TV shows are dead. They're just dragging the corpse. 
You know, it's done, man. Right? There's nothing left. And people want to say, oh, imagination, imagination is never going to end. Yeah, imagination, imagination is never going to end. But it's only because you use and recycle the same imaginations of the past to, pr to create something that's seemingly new that's now. You know? And, and, and what makes me mad is that the young generation is not going to appreciate uh, Ninja Turtles. They're going to say, oh, the new Ninja Turtles is better because it has better CGI and all stuff. But no, you have to understand that without the original creators of the first Ninja Turtles, um, um, what's, it, what's his name? Uh, uh, the creator of Transformers, Michael Bay, wouldn't have no idea, wouldn't have no ideas to start off. He wouldn't have an idea of Ninja Turtles. He wouldn't have no, no job. Because all he's been doing is being is, is remaking nostalgic movies. You know, he wouldn't have nothing to do. There wouldn't be no Ninja Turtles without the original creators of the Ninja Turtles to give the inspiration to Michael Bay to create the new Ninja Turtles. And without Transformer cartoons and toys, Michael Bay wouldn't have no idea how to create a remake of the, of, of the Transformers of now. You know, you have to understand, the younger generation has to understand that everything before it gives gives perpetuation and proceeds and feeds off something in the future you know like everything in the past has much more um value to it you know yeah it doesn't look right now but you have to understand that let me get back to the audience people are not fooled anymore people are not fooled you have to understand that maybe the movies nowadays the 80s movies and 90s movies maybe they don't look that good to the to the year 2000 generation but you have to understand that when that movie came out in our era, it was magic. It blew us away. It was something that occupied our lives every minute. It was something that made sense to us. And it, it, you felt something in your heart when you watched Indiana Jones. I loved that movie. I loved the series. And people don't understand that those feelings is what matters the most. Movies nowadays, they hardly even give you those butterflies. They hardly even give you those feelings. That's what's sad. You know? And we I'm starting to lose some time, so we need to realize that filmmaking is done. People are not gullible enough. People people's hearts and minds are too strained by stresses of life. Nowadays, people back then were ready for magic. They were ready. They were wide-eyed and bushy-tailed ready for life they were ready for 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 new things that's why movies back then are will continue to be legendary and continue to dominate the future they will continue to dictate how to tell a story how to make people feel a story and they will continue to to spawn and copycats because they are that that damn good that goes for move, for books and video games and that goes for toys and that goes for everything in the 20th century. Everything in the 20th century is going to is going to um is going to influence the 21st century. So everyone out there, they diss the 20th century, but the 20th century is what's giving the 21st century life. The 20th century is what's giving the 21st century life. It's what's giving it life. It's what's giving us movies in the theaters instead of just blank, instead of just months and months and months of, of just blank, dead projections in theaters. Without them, we would just we, we would have months and months of nothing on, in, in theaters. Back then, people were more gullible. They had their hearts ready. Nowadays, people are too smart. And that's too bad because in the same way, we can't go back because we have to progress as a society now, do we? That's why it's the end, and that's why it, movies and TV shows it will continue to be the end, no matter what happens, because people are not people are not in the same mindset they were. Times have changed. Stories you can't you can't reuse the stories over and over. You can't tell a new story because it's all been told. Times have changed, and it's only downhill for films and TV. You're gonna get some bleeps and bloops of some good ideas and movies and stories and books and whatever, and TV shows, but it's not gonna save. The situation is not going to fix the situation of entertainment. Music, too, is not going to help it. How many times can you, every year there has to be a, a song about love, about hate, about being cheated on, about drugs, 
about partying every year it's always like that that's why films music and movie entertainment is dead and there's more that I want to say but I hope that this gets across to the people out there that TV shows movies and entertainment as a whole is dead and there's nothing we can do and the main reason why is because people are have progressed away from the innocence of of life itself the innocence of of cinema magic of the the innocence of just wanting magic to enter them people see people see the ending before the movie starts people see things coming we see the punch coming we you know like storytelling it's like being telegraphed that's how crappy stories are in movies and story and movies are and uh, television stories are everything that we see on television is being telegraphed even young kids see that telegraph that old-fashioned telegraph plot old-fashioned telegraph storyline coming by the old-fashioned telegraph um you know um stereotype of the nerd and the and the and the evil evil boss you know who who's gonna live at the end who i wonder who who's gonna win the bad guy or the good guy hmm, i wonder who's gonna oh oh you know yeah i wonder who's gonna win against good and bad you know it's being telegraphed that's how old and crappy there's it, it it's not like a quick one two you know you know it's not coming and it, it, it's not tr it's not tricking us it's not wowing us and people and it's too late you can't do that no more there's no way in hell that a person just can't fast forward a movie and see the ending and you know there's no way it's just that movies are dead and how is it this is gonna be kind of funny how is it you know if, when I was a kid I used to think of movies as that well what's the difference between um, Night Living Dead and Robocop there is no difference they, all, they both have the same quality film they both look the same quality on TV or in projections how how can Robocop not walk into the set of, of Night Living Dead all by accident or how can the dinosaurs walk onto the set of Titanic of Jurassic Park you know like to me it was a movies were a joke because movies were nothing more than just flashbangs money-making fake heartless things you know like you know I, I love Jurassic Park a lot of the 20th century I'm not trying to diss them but even in the 90s it was a foreshadowing of the end for filmmaking for me you know and I used to perceive and see and see funny things and kind of combine things it's been the end for a long time people people are just too smart and Hollywood and filmmakers are nothing more than making fools of themselves P human beings are making fools of themselves being stereotypes being the gay guy being the straight guy being the evil gay guy being the being the goofy nerd on the computer that gets smacked with the with the uh uh, with with a baseball bat or something, human beings are making fools of themselves just so they can make millions of dollars that they're not even gonna take to heaven. You know, it's tomfoolery. It's dead. It's not gonna change. Thank you very much. Think about what I said. It's done, brother. It's over.